I, I want to talk to you today how to protect your house. And I'm not talking to protect your house where you live at. You know, you probably got beat up furniture. No one wants to break into your house anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about your spiritual house. Many Christians are losing their salvation. Many Christians are, are they gone woke. Many Christians have gone woke. The world has gone woke. You know how the girl got woke. Uh, the whole world is just, I mean, look at the world today. We, we got into a place that when we can't fix something, we legalize it. When we can't fix something, we make it legal because we don't let God fix it because God can fix it, but we don't want God in the equation. So what we do is we legalize homosexuality, smoke your weed. Christians smoking weed now. They think it's legal here, but it's not legal in heaven. <laughs> think about it. So, 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 so based, based on how you protect your home, how you protect your house, your spiritual house, how you protect God's good investment. You with me? How you protect God's good investment? You, you know that God, you God's good investment, and God wants to return from you? You know, God wants to return from you? It's in the talents, man. It's in the Bible. Two, he gave two, two talents, but brother bust out four. Gave one to ten, he, I mean five, he bust out ten. God's saying, where are your fruits? Where are your fruits? Because today we don't have fruits anymore. We, we're not doing fruits because we don't have the Holy Spirit. We got entertainment in the house of God. We got singing, but no worship in the house of God. We don't have no fear of the house. We have no reverence in the house of God. We don't have, we don't, we don't put God first in this house. Now is everything entertainment. I need to smoke light, disco lights, and bring Starbucks. That's the house of God today. We know that we have taken the house of God today and we have played games with something to be truthful that you're going to have to pay, and you're going to have to give an account. We have to give an account. How, 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 it, it's crazy how you take God out of the, the equation, out of the house, out of the word of God. Today we separated Jesus from the cross. Today we, Christianity has become, has become uh, how would I say, secret friendly. No, secret friendly. I tell the truth, man. I, br I drop it to you like it's hot. At least you make heaven. We can't tell the people truth anymore. We can't preach truth anymore. We, we, we can't tell you that, listen, homosexuality is a sin. I mean, you got big time preachers on TV. When they ask them the question, they duck the question. They dance around it. You know, they can't, they, people don't want to address Christians in church. Shocking up. Shocking up. Shacking up in, in the house of God, you, you, and you're part of the worship team, you're part of the committee team, and you come and you sing a song, but I tell you what, you ain't going to heaven. Because you just, you see, you define love according to the world. You don't define love according to God's principles. So, so Ricky loves me. I love Ricky. Really? Those I love the word of God. Who do you love me? Doesn't line up with the word of God. Doesn't line up with his word. And people, people get offended. Because we now, now we have a spirit of offense in the house of God. Yeah. You see, people hop. I got to look for another church because, you know, I'm hurt. You weren't hurt when you are in the world. People were smacking you around. You ain't hurt when your boss is treating you like crap and you still go get that cheap paycheck. But now I'm hurt in the house of God. It, it, you know, it, it's, I, I want to teach you. See, when I was in witchcraft, when it assigned me to a Christian, my job was to monitor, say monitoring spirits to monitor you. To find out what was your blueprint. To find out where you was weak and defenseless. So I can attack you from that location. So I will have a spiritual blueprint of your character, your personality, and who you were. So when I come after you, I know I can break you into pieces spiritually. So I, I, had, I knew how to size you up in the spirit. I knew your spiritual condition. And then the first thing I sent your way, it was in a Delilah spirit, in a Jezebel. 
that comes later. I have to send temptation your way. A spirit that will tempt you to open the door to get the other demons to come in. That's why the Bible says there's no temptation coming to man that God doesn't make a way of escape. And then the James said, G, James said, God don't tempt no one and God cannot be tempted. So what the devil sends your way? Temptation. Temptation. Listen, the number one ministry of the devil was temptation. He tempted a third of the angels in heaven. And plus, his second ministry is influence. Influential. Now everybody wants to be influential. Yo, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Because everybody wants to be influential. You know the people, these preachers today on YouTube, they traded the anointing for influence. Don't confuse someone that hoop and holler that that's the anointing. That's influence. Because the words that they preach and they give to you, it doesn't convict you. It excites you. That's the difference between a person that's preaching, edifying you, convicts you, and the person that is preaching with empty words excites you, but no conviction. You leave the same. Oh, baby, it's going to get hot in here. Put on the seatbelt. <laughs> Temptation is the apple that the devil brings because he knows that the temptation he brings, it has to attract your curiosity. So, 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 so let, 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 let me say this real quick. Did my wife text me? She's always late. Pray for her. Don't pray for me. I'm perfect. <laughs> so, so, so check that out. A true story. A true story real quick. There was a man that he had, uh, he was cap a captain. He had a ship. He would take cargo from Colombia to California. And back and forth, back and forth. And the bad guys... The drug dealers came up to him and said, hey, we're going to drop $500,000 if you take this shipment from Colombia to California for us. He said, no way. I'm not going to do that. Not gonna, no, I'm not going to give in to that. It doesn't work. They kept making offers. Because with the first offer the devil gives you, you don't take, he'll keep making offers. So they amped up the offers. Keep amping up the offers to this man. They got up to $2 million. And he said, he said, uh, let me think about it. He called the DEA, set up a sting in California. They caught the bad guys. The DEA, this is the interesting part. The DEA asked him, asked him, what took you so long? What took you so long to contact us on this stuff? He said, because it was getting close to my price. Temptation comes with a price. Temptation comes with a price. Temptation comes with a price. Yeah. What is the devil tempting you with? That he has taken you. You know what the first thing the devil robbed you? You know the first thing he robbed you? He don't take your wife. He don't take your kids. He don't want your kids. Your kids are crazy. <laughs> you know what the devil takes out of you? Takes your time. That's what the Bible says, redeem your time. The days are evil. If I steal your time, I steal your purpose and your destiny. I don't have time for church. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read the Bible. But you got time to gossip. You got time to watch Netflix. You got time to get yourself on social media and put your dirt up there. Oh, it's okay. No. Let me just hold time out. Amen, John. You preaching good. Let me just amen. Let me amen. Let me let me amen myself. It's okay. Uh, you, you must have took Dayquil this morning. It's okay. 
Let me amen myself because I know what I'm talking about. I watch my time. I don't let people get into my spiritual space. I turn around. I got three systems. I got the holies of holy. I got the middle court. And I got the outer court. If you're a joker, you'll be in the outer court. You'll never get to the holies of holy. If you okay, you might be in the middle court. Everybody said they're Christian. They're not Christian. Lives. Christian Dior maybe, but you ain't Christian. Because when I look at you, I don't see no fruit. I see a fig tree. And the fig tree is a person that has a form of godliness but denying the power. And that's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. Because it had an appearance of something that could produce anything. You think Jesus, Jesus could have said, he could have snapped his finger and got Burger King. <laughs> he can make, he, yeah, exactly. Before Burger King, he could say, have it my way. Bang. <laughs> they go to Whopper. <laughs> Jesus could snap his finger and do anything he wanted. But everything he did had an illustration of who we were going to be and who he was and what he wants us to be. The same thing with when Jesus cast out the 20, he cast out the demon from Mark chapter 5. What is your name? Now you got people doing deliverance ministry. What is your name? What is your name? I don't give a crap your name, demon. Come out in the name of Jesus. I don't, what is your name? How long you been there? You know, what, what are you doing? How you come in? How you come out? Bunch of idiots. How long you been there? What is your name? And then we go, well, my name is Julio Ramirez Pedro Gonzalez. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> orale, I've been here a long time ago. Do you have a corona for me? <laughs> and the team is going to tell the truth. Well, you know, uh, you got me. <laughs> what am I going to do? He'll send Fred. See, demons got tricks. So the demon was send Fred out first. But not the strong man, not the main demon, but the main demon has the rule of your demise. So he said, Fred, Fred the demon is just the branches of the tree. That's why discernment is so key in the house of God. Because today we don't know who's a prophet and who's a Simon the sorcerer. But today, everybody's a prophet. Everybody. I know ministers that left the deliverance ministry, now they're prophets. I'm like, it's like, I met this, I met this person. What is, what is your ministry? Well, I'm an intercessor. Good, cool, power. Amen. Next week, I say, what do you mean? I'm a pastor now. <laughs> I'm like, last week, you was intercessor. Are you a pastor? Next week, I'm like, what, what do you do now? I'm a bishop. You're a junkie on titles. So you are. No one wants to serve and no one wants to be a volunteer. See, the devil's plot for believers, and I said this in, uh, what was that place again? That one. <laughs> I go so many places, I don't know where I'm at anymore. <laughs> I'm going to California tomorrow since I'm going on vacation. Then I leave on Tuesday is my birthday. Then I, I spend birthday with my wife. Then I leave Wednesday, take New York City. And then I go to, fly. the next day I fly, I fly to New York City Wednesday. The next day I fly to North Carolina. Then I, and then I fly back, back to New York City. Then I fly to the Jim Baker show. It's like, bam, 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 bam. So when it stops in December, my last two preachings is in California, 16, 17. When it stops, I'm like, what I do now? What I do now? What I do now? What I do now? What I, and I look at my wife. So you have a demon? I cast it out. <laughs> what I do now? What I do now? Yo, pretend you got a demon. <laughs> my wife is Asian. All Asian people got a lot of demons. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see. <laughs> so come out, Jesus. Then get the anointing oil. Come on, honey. <laughs> My wife got two demons. It's called Chanel <laughs> and Louis. <laughs> I ain't lying. 
look, she's carrying one with her. <laughs> See, she's carrying one with her. Told you. Man, my wife is hot. So, 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 so this is what the devil does. Let me, let, me, let me break something down to you. The devil knows, I said to people yesterday, or the day before yesterday, the devil can't beat God, but he can stop your growth. Yeah. Right? So the devil can't beat God, he can stop your growth. The, you, know, God, you know, God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. And Jesus is gangster. Yeah. Jesus was never a punk. Jesus was so gangster that when he rose again, he still hung out for 40 days. That's gangster. Jesus is, I mean, Jesus is gangster. Look how gangster Jesus is, right? In, 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 in Deuteronomy chapter 7, he get Moses and Aaron. Now, Moses and Aaron, 80, 81. He get two old men with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Look how gangster he is. He get two old men that on social security with a stick. He said, go see the toughest guy in the planet, Pharaoh. Go see the toughest guy in the planet, Pharaoh. So you got these two old, old guys show up. With a stick. Let my people go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's gangster. That's, you got two broken old men with a stick. Let my people go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, you, you don't even have to smoke weed. This is you get high on this. <laughs> you get high on this. I mean, think about it. Let my people go. So you're going to the cribs in the blood. Let my people go. <laughs> and then look how gangster God is. Look how gangster he is. He sent these two old folks to go fight this guy. Right? And then this is what I want to teach you something. Right? Because in, in, in laughter and humor, there's truth. So he sent these two guys. So Moses turned around and said, okay, you want, you want to throw down? He throw the stick. Now, now think about it. It's God, Moses, Aaron, against Pharaoh, the two magicians, the magic workers, the sorcerers, and the devil. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now it's a showdown. It's a throwdown now. We're going to see who's going to punk out. It's a throwdown. Right? So he told the staff. So Pharaoh said, please, yo, go get Julio and Fred. Watch this. We can do the same thing. They come down, they throw the staff, turn to snakes too. With me? So now Moses and Aaron say, oh, come on, what's up? Because this is what the devil does. The devil wants to put doubt and fear and unbelief in you. So he told the staff, the magician said, Psh, we can do this all day. Bang, same thing. God won't run around, the devil won't run around. He said, okay. God said, yo, strike the waters. Pow, strike the water, turn to blood. The magicians come, the sorcerers, the magic workers. Psh, we can do this. Psh, the same thing. With me? Now Moses saying, yo, Aaron. <laughs> they want two rounds, we want two rounds. This is getting tight. This is for you. Because if the devil wants you to believe that he got more power than God. In the fight, in your battle, in your tribulation, in your testing, the devil wants you to believe that he's more powerful than God. And Christians buy into the notion that believe that the devil has power. Okay? So now, third, the third round. Third round. Strike the water, frogs all over the place. The magician says, so what? We got this, Pharaoh. Don't worry about it. We got your back. Same thing. Now it's three rounds to three. And this is when God draws the line. God said, enough is enough. I'm going to show that I'm God and you're not. God turned around and told Moses, strike the, strike the dust of the earth. Turn around. Strike the dust of the earth. Aaron and Moses strike the dust of the earth. And they take nothing and turn it into something. Because they took dirt and turned it into gnats. How you take dirt and put a DNA on it? You put eyes on it. You put wings on it. You put antennas on it. And the Pharaoh and the devil and the magician turned to Pharaoh and said, that had to be the finger of God. Because we can't do it. Because God will let the devil go so far. 
until he declared that I am God and you not. And then what happens in Ron 8, Ron 8, chapter 8, Deuteronomy? Fire knows he can't beat God now. But he can put shackles on you and mess up your growth. And I was telling people in Tucson, you come to church in shackles. You worship in shackles. You pray in shackles. You read your Bible in shackles. You go to church in shackles because you call that the norm because you don't trust God to set you free. That's your story. You come, you, you normalize what could be cast out. You normalize all your sickness. You normalize your conditions, your spiritual condition. You normalize it just like the world does. What the world does, when they can't fix crap, they make it legal. So you make, you make your generation of curses, you make your strongholds, your bondage is legal. You make it legal. In Christ, God said, who the Son set free is free indeed. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Temptation. Temptation knows your price. Eve was an apple. Judah was 30 pieces of silver. David was a woman. Think about it. David was supposed to be, that's why you got to be in God's perfect world, God's perfect timing, baby. Because when you're not in God's perfect world, perfect timing, you be looking out the wrong window. You see the hoochie down the block in the project. Woo! That skank looks good. Because your wife is 80% and the skank is 20 and just because your wife doesn't do the 20%, so now you think the 20% is bigger than the 80%. Oh, yeah, baby, it's okay. It's okay. Now you're going out with the hoochie with the big red lipstick and the, and the phony, phony makeup. And your, your girl, don't, don't hide. Sister's just the same way. Oh, he got muscles. My, 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 my husband got a belly. What would be what it be like if I be with him? And he got devils, pro sex, and all kind of crap in his house. Because it's a witchcraft called 8020. I used to do that witchcraft to people. I made the 20% look bigger than the 80% that you had at home. And then you drop your wife, and it's like the dog at the lake that got the bone in his mouth. He got the 80%. He look at the water, delusional, deliver spirit. And think that the bone in the water looks bigger because it's just a reflection. And you drop the one in your mouth and you go after the water and you get nothing. You lose everything. And you lose your family. You lose your home. You lose everything. It's okay. I know your pastor don't preach this way. That's why you're here. Thank you. Amen. 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 I tell you, I teach you stuff so you could be armed and dangerous. So when you see the devil, you can see the devil from around the corner. You don't even have to get to the corner. You can see him from around the corner. I teach you that. I show you that. I show you the schemes, the wild, the plots of the enemy that's coming after. Why he's coming after? Your house. Who you are. Because Christ adopted you and he signs adoption papers with the blood of his son. But you was an orphan. You was in foster care of the world. And Christ showed up and he said, give me those two crazy guys. We're not Jewish. We're not Jewish. Jews were the chosen one. I think Jesus picked wrong, but that's my. <laughs> Should have picked us first. <laughs> Solomon. Solomon downfall with 700 wives. See, David looked out the window. He saw Bathsheba. He should have been out there at war doing the thing that God called him to do. Because David was a man of war. He stood home and he got a lazy boy chair, decided to look out the window, and Bathsheba was taking a, was taking a shower. That, 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 they didn't have no curtains. Couldn't go to, couldn't go to TJ Maxx and get some curtains. <laughs> so think about it. And, 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 they, and, and it's King Solomon. What was King Solomon's down for? 700 wives and 300 hoochies. That's 
smartest man in the planet. And God told him, this is, God is gangster. God tell you, don't do this, and you go do it. God said, don't eat from the tree of life, and uh, don't eat from the tree. You go do it. God tell you, stay away from fire woman. And you're like, what's up, baby? <laughs> and, then, and then, you know what's crazy? You, you miss the warning signs. Because the Holy Spirit is the warning signs. Don't, don't go that way. Don't do that. Don't give in to that. Don't play with that. Turn that off. Don't entertain that. Don't go there. Those are the warning signs. And you, and, and you just have God. You turn off the warning button. And then you override the voice of God and you fall into temptation to the prime mind. And so, so 700 wives, I was telling people in Tucson, you know what 700 wives? Think about it. Solomon, uh, from 50 years old to 58, because Solomon died in the prime of his life at 50 years old. The brother had a wedding every four days. If you go for... <laughs> If you go from 50 to 58, 700 wives, that's a wedding every four days. That's a lot of wedding cake. Wow. <laughs> You'd be like, we're going to eat wedding cake again? And that's not even calling it the hoochies he had. How is it the smartest man in the world? His demise, he died at 58 years old. Think about it. A man that God has blessed him with wisdom beyond human comprehension. That people came from all over the world in his time to come see him because of his wisdom. And you die at 58 years old. Thank God I'm going to be 62 so I pass that. <laughs> just, woo! Hallelujah! Because I've done some dumb crap. I've done some dumb crap. I, got, I tell it myself. I've done stuff... I was in New York City, remember? They give me, the guy was going to give me a ticket. I smacked the hat off his head. I was a younger Christian. <laughs> and he was like, 911, 911, I need backup. <laughs> you don't get, you'll get it later. <laughs> but I'm here preaching today. <laughs> I'm not on the run. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on the run. Just, it was a bad week. It was a bad week. Temptation, listen, temptation will feed on your curiosity. Whatever you're curious about, whatever the devil creates to make something curious in your life, to get your attention, to get your time, to get a moment, he's going to present it to you. It's going to feed on your curiosity. Leave the door closed out of curiosity. If it's not in the word of God, leave it alone. Leave it alone. People say, I found the book of Judah. I found the book of Judas. Judah hung himself, dude. You're not trying to write a book. <laughs> I found the lost books of so-and-so. My dude, if it's not from Genesis or Revelation, I don't want to hear it. Don't bring them. The devil knows how to write books, too. I found the book of this. I found the book of this. I find the lost books. They're not lost. Because if Jesus wanted them in the Bible, he would have put them there. See, the devil will get something to incarcerate your mind, your thinking, your thoughts, to get you away from the truth, which is the word of God. That's why curiosity is a dangerous thing. But I was just curious. I went over there. I was just curious to know her name. I was just curious to go do this. I was just curious to test this, to take this, to try this. How many times we grew up, how many people grew up in the hood? Come on, let me hear you. Come on, let me hear you. Come on. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, we got some hoodlums in here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> how many times you were curious and you tried a little, a little weed? Let's be honest. We tried a little weed. You said, well, yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> I got the munchies. And then, and then before you know, you were sniffing. One thing led to another. And now you're arrested. And look where it started. Just because you hit, you hit the you hit the peace pipe. See, curiosity, the devil will bring. See, you you waiting for, you waiting for you you like oh I'm waiting for Jezebel. No, 
it has to, the devil has to present a key to open the door in order to let Jezebel in, to let temptation in, to let stronghold bondages in, oppression, depression, suicide in. Suicide doesn't come first because you can't put the carriage before the horse. So how do I keep my house closed? How do I keep my house clean? So how do I cleanse my house? Bible says, you know what your house, what Bible says? Guard your salvation. Guard your house. And you got, you got these stupid preachers saying, one save, always save. Your mother. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm buying into that. I'm buying into that. I want to go to heaven. I'm not buying into that because if that was the place, phew, I'd be at the club. If I get saved, okay, give me, throw me in there. Okay, uh, Saturday, I'll be, at the, I'll be at the club. No. Work out your salvation, the Bible says. We're trembling and f f be and trembling. Fear of God. Work it out. Cultivate it. Produce fruit over your salvation. That, that's why you need the church. That's why you need pastors to help you cultivate your tree. That churches don't cultivate tree. Their churches, you big fig trees. That church produced fig trees. Real churches produce fruit. Well, I can't drive that far. I can't drive that far. You drive that far for the devil, for that Pharaoh you work for. That shows your priorities are crooked. Your salvation is crooked. Your life is crooked. Your purpose, destiny is crooked. And when you're crooked, you might go like this. Woo, woo. You know, your, 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 your boat go this way, and then go this way, whoosh, right down to hell. There was a man in the parable that he, he, he was in heaven, and God said, how did you get here? How did you get here? He was confused. He didn't sneak in. Like, do you sneak in the movie theater like you used to? Remember back in the day, we used to sneak in the movie theater. We used to take it, your stub. Oh, I left it in the bathroom. He was genuine. He was very genuine. He said, well, you know, God said, Psh, get him out of here. Cast him out to other darkness. Listen, listen. In, 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 it's impossible. It's impossible to resist the devil. In, if any, if all the areas of your life is not submitted to God. If all the areas in your life is not submitted to God, it would be impossible to resist the devil. Because the devil has been playing this game for 2,000 years, baby. So you got nothing on him. The only thing you got on him when your life is submitted to God, and then you got the upper hand on the devil. Right. Just because your pocket is full of scripture, that don't mean nothing. The devil's, the devil's pocket got more scripture than yours. He be tried on Jesus in the wilderness. He said, well, if you throw yourself down here, the angels will catch you. He was, he was twisting Psalms 91 on Jesus. Do the devil don't know scripture? Temptation is a slow death. It's a slow death. It's, it, it's, like, it's like in Psalm 91, the young lion. The young, it, it shows the full entrapment of the devil. The follower in Psalm 91 is the devil. And then it shows the full entrapment of the, and the one is the young lion. It's the one that you think you can control. It's like the pit bull that you guys, baby pit bull. So you, whoosh, a pit bull, get out of here. Whoosh, get out of here. But when he's 150 pounds, you can't kick him and put him in the cage anymore because he has a real good bite. So you can turn off the little computer and say, well, you know, that little pornographic thing for 10 minutes was okay. Well, oh, that was okay. You know, I, I can stop anytime I want. I can stop watching that anytime I want. I got it under control. I can handle it. God knows. And then that devil will start to grow. And now you, now you got $29.95 subscription. I keep it there. PG. And before you know it, you know, your eyes so glue. Your eyes so glue to your computer, you eye, you, you, you caca. It, 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 the devil knows your price. The devil knows your weakness, where you're weak, and where you're defenseless. But if we had lost, 
you know, the, you know, the fear of God, we have lost the fear of God in God's house. We do whatever is right in our own eyes now. The reverence that belongs to him. You know that the Bible said that the demons tremble at his name? Demons. Demons. There's four demons tied up in the Referis River underneath that. It dried up already. You know that, right? When they let those four bozos out, they can, they're going to kill a third of mankind. They fear the monsters. They tied up in dungeons. And they fear God. That's why I said Jesus is gangster. You should reverence and fear God for all he's done for you. When you lose the fear of God, you become spiritually weak. When you lose God, the fear of God, you become spiritual. You know, in March, March, March 11, 2019, I died in my apartment. And it's amazing when you die. It's like off the hook. When you die. If you're a Christian, if you're not, you're in trouble, Jack. You better hope you're dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> when you die, you come out of your body, and it feels like a magnet. It feels like something is, like, pulling you. And you, can, and you see your body there, and you can't turn back and say, well, I'm going to just get back in, you know. No. When, and then when you come out, your body, your thinking changes. Your thinking is not the same as you and your body. Because when I was coming out of my body, I wasn't thinking, oh, my God, my daughter's going to be crying. My mom's going to be heartbroken. And I only got one daughter. I'm smart. And my daughter's going to be depressed because she lost her daddy. You don't think that when you leave your body as a believer. And, don't, and, it's, and, a, and a peace comes over you. Like you're out of time. So I looked at my body. I like, I've been on Sid Ross. You know Sid Ross, right? I've been on his show a couple of times, right? And you got these people saying, I came out of my body, Sid Ross, in supernatural. And I came out of my body, and I looked, and I was like, oh, I, that body was ugly. It was depleted. It was messed up. And, and it, man, he need, I didn't know I needed a haircut. You know, and, and <laughs> coming out of his body, and I, I, I'm, so, I'm so glad I came out because when I looked at my body back there, it looked really bad. Not mine. <laughs> uh, not me. I was like, wow, that Puerto Rican, that Puerto Rican is sexy. That Puerto Rican looks good. <laughs> I was like, yo. And this is what I, this is the only words that came out of my mouth. And it wasn't even my eyes. It was God. I said, Lord, I am so disappointed that you're taking me home early. If you would have left me here, I would have done so much more for you. And he put me back into my body. And man, when he put me back into my body, my hands started to stretch again. My fingers started to feel the, the current of the blood system again. I felt my whole heart start to move again. It took like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before everything started just to flow. And he said, God, he said, John, I hold the pen of your story. So before you leave tonight, I want to know if Jesus holds the pen of your story. Or you holding it. Or the world's holding it. Or the devil's holding it. But if you're holding it, you need a lot of white out. If the devil's holding, he's writing the wrong story. If Jesus is holding it, he's going to write a masterpiece. <laughs> because you see, like Pastor was saying, the other man is always shopping. The other man is always looking for temptation and curiosity. The other man is the flesh, the soulish man. And if you don't fast and pray, you're not in a good church, your soulish man will own the inner man. And then you become a cardinal Christian instead of being a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because Isaiah says, 54 Isaiah 17 says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. But the devil knows this, though. The devil knows the temptation, temptation, the devil knows temptation when he brings it to you and he produces to you. He knows that he has to customize it and tell him made the weapon of his choice towards you. He has to, he has to, and he has to demonically engineer something that will fit you. Because he's not going to send something random to you. He's going to send something that would 
make your mouth watery. And that's why many Christians lose battles and fights because the customized weapon, the telemate weapon the devil does gets you and you can't fight the good fight of faith. Because the devil's not going to send something that you're not going to be attracted to. The devil's not going to send something that you're not going to be curiosity about. You with me? The devil's not going to say he has to customize it. Yeah, that's why Christians losing battles, losing fights. Because we can't fight the good fight of fight when the devil's engineering something that fits the script, that fits you. Because he knows your weakness. He knows what you're defensive. That's why you need to protect. Don't protect the areas that are strong. Protect the areas that were you weak. Protect the areas that you're defenseless. Protect those areas. So he won't customize something that will fit you. And you will go and take the bait. You with me? No, nothing, the devil doesn't do nothing random. Because and then it produces fear, loneliness, sickness, unforgiveness, and lust. We need to win the battle. I'm not going to let them, you know, I'm not, listen. I've learned, like Paul said, to be content in all circumstances. Because as the scripture says, godliness with contentment is great gain. If Jesus don't release it, I don't want it. You know that I was supposed to be, and in, in, I, I, I had a movie deal with two people, and because I didn't bend my knee to, the, to Hollywood, they didn't give me the movie. I had two. The people did Unplanned, the movie Unplanned, whatever, Chuck and Harry, those two bozos. They did the movie Unplanned. I sat with them in Burbank, had, had lunch with them. And I was supposed to, they, 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 want, they was considering to do my movie, my first book. And just because I, I, I ridiculed, first that they were whacked out, they said to me, uh, if we do your movie, uh, do you oppose? Do you oppose that we bring a rabbi, an iman, and we bring a carno to bless the studio? I'm like, okay, uh, they can go first. And I'll clean up the mess. They said, they said, give us your name. I said, John Remers. They said, we're going to look at the stuff online and come back. Because I exposed the system of the Catholic Church. We're not doing your movie. <laughs> then there was another cat, which I like, and I still like. He did the movies, Miracles from Heaven. Uh, the kid went to heaven, came back. <laughs> what was the name of that movie? <laughs> heaven is Real. Old people, drink the pills. I mean, it's real. <laughs> he, did, he, did that, he did those movies. I sat with him. He went to my Instagram, and he said, I was a Trump supporter. He said, I can't do your movie. <laughs> yeah, so Trump owed me a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so the only, guy, the only person I got left in Hollywood is Mel Gibson. <laughs> Hopefully he'll do something. But Mel is crazy. No, it's whacked out. <laughs> so maybe he'll one day consider to do <laughs> my move. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. I could have said I'd remove the videos. I could have said I'd take every Instagram post down from Donald Trump if you do my movie. Oh. Promotion comes from God. <laughs> I'm going to do Trump. I'm a do Trump. I love this country. The heroes, um, the heroes for me in this country are the veterans. Those are my heroes. Those are my heroes. Ain't no John LeBron James. Ain't no football player. Ain't none of that crap. No, 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 baby. Those ain't my heroes. My hero is the veterans when they wear the hats and they say, we fought for your freedom. We died for you. We love you. We love America. That's the people that I, those are my superheroes. Not Marvel, not Captain Crunch, and not Superman, none of that crap. I will not bend my knee, but only to the cross of Jesus Christ. No weapon, no hell, no witch. You don't have enough money or no blessing to take care of me. We need to take back our country to prayer. We need to take back our children. That's why I'm not an idol worshiper. I'm not worshiping Trump. But I like when he said, Jesus is the man. 
I like what he said. Matter of fact, he talks about Jesus more than your pastor. He said, there's someone bigger than me. There's someone who's more of a superstar than me. His name is Jesus Christ. And he said, and he said, he said, and when I become president again, we're going to go to schools and we're going to fire all these teachers and put them in jail if they continue to teach our children that crap. Right, exactly. So that's why I cast my lot for him. Not for that corpse in the White House right now. That corpse in the White House. You wear pull-ups. <laughs> wear pull-ups. How you walk? Up, how you fall walking up the stairs? <laughs> how that works? I mean, I can fall down the stairs, you know. Even my, my eyes are so messed up, I don't know where the stairs are. I still make it down the stairs <laughs> and up the stairs. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Jesus man. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. If I'm going to cast my vote, I'm going to be with the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to cast my vote because, you know, he's black and he's Obama. Bullcrap. I'm going to cast my vote. He's Ricky Martin. He's Puerto Rican. Well, he's my homeboy, Puerto Boricua. Look at that. Ricky's gay. I'm going to cast my vote for Ricky. <laughs> Ricky like men. I'm going to cast my vote because he's Boricua. I'm not Puerto Rican anymore. Because I, I live for a kingdom that is unmovable, unshakable. I live for an eternal kingdom. You know that you're immortal and to God calls you home. I live for king. So I'm not Boricua anymore. I've I, I, I never been to a Puerto Rican Day Parade. It made me sick. In, in New York City, I'm driving. I pull up next to this guy's car. He got a flag. He got a flag here and a flag here and a flag on his. Uh, no, no, this other one is real Catholic. He got the little Bible in front of his dashboard. Then he got the little stupid frog, that little coquille crap he got there. And I rolled up to him on the light. I rolled down my window and said, yo, you Puerto Rican? He said, how you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <"Phew." laughs> Then you ask him, you go to Puerto Rican Day Parade? Oh, yeah, man, you are, you are. It's just like, Phew. It's just like, I'm there. Uh, what's the history of Puerto Rico? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, people. When I died in 1999, I went to hell and came back. You know, in 1999, when I died and went to hell, I was preparing the biggest witchcraft to destroy a lot of people's lives. I had animals. I had blood. I had blood. I had animals who used the blood to do witchcraft. I had coffins. I had all these demonic things to destroy people's lives. And I lived in a building of a community that had 179 buildings. And Jesus knew my address. And I was going to, in a week before that, I was going to commit my first human sacrifice. I was coming from a club. And the devil was then sitting in my passenger seat. You could feel the presence of the devil in my passenger seat. And he turns over and he says to me, how much you love me? I said, I love you. You know that. You're my father. He said, there's some, someone on the 12th floor. He's hiding behind the door. If you love me, you sacrifice him tonight for me. I went up the elevator. I, look, I went around the corner of the door. I grabbed him. He was, he was in army fatigue. He was about 6'4". I was half demon possessed. I grabbed him, tried to drag him into my apartment. Because right around the corner of my apartment was a closet that had the devil's horns. And it had a big pot with human bones in it and animal blood and human blood in it. And I was going to stab him in the juggler brain and, and then cut his feet off and his arm off so I can put it in my pot so the demons could walk the earth like a human being with body parts. And I was going to do that to that person. He escaped off my hands. And a week later, Jesus visited me in my apartment. So I know that God is real. 
my stuff was, and I was not in a little church. And if you get saved in a church, oh, listen, it's awesome. Wherever God saves you, it's awesome. It's, it's, matter of fact, wherever God saves you is eternal. It's an eternal moment in your life. Because heaven's open and Christ shine his face upon your darkness. And, and, and check this out. And I want you to check this out. My last meeting that I went to the witch doctor's meeting, it was all 17 warlocks. I got the marks, I got the cross carved into my flesh here. You, if you come close here, upside down. I got cuts in my body. I got cuts in my back when I sold my soul to the devil. And I got the, I got the 21 rolls to the dark side, which is supposed to be a representation of the mark of the beast. Not the mark of the beast, the Bible, the mark of the beast that the devil owns all your real estate rights. They know you high key. It's called the shadows of the demonic. And on top of that, the guy that did my ceremony, he was Fidel Castro, right-hand man in Cuba to protect Fidel from the FBI killing him through witchcraft. So this Mark Anthony and this whole Jennifer Lopez, they are devil worshipers. Beyonce, Jay-Z, all these people are devil worshipers. So when you go to the concerts and you raise your hand, you are being indoctrinated. You are being ceremony into a ki demonic kingdom. When you worship and you sing the song, you are chanting the words that the enemy you're making contracts with. Because Jennifer can't. My wife looks better than Jennifer. Jennifer is ugly. Amen. Praise the Lord. There you go. Jennifer is ugly. All Puerto Rican girls got big butts. It was, it was, what's, wrong, what's so special about hers? Witchcraft, Santeria, Peritimo, Palamayumbe, she got there. Beyonce say, I get demon possessed by a spirit called Sasha. Matter of fact, Beyonce did the ceremony in Santeria, water chung, she called it Ifa. She's a devil worshiper. The whole Illuminati thing, the eye, they call it something else, but it's the eye of the devil. That's what they go like that. The eye of the devil. That's what they do. It's Illuminati, but that thing represents the eye of the enemy. So all these movies, all these actors, all these people that you worship and you sing their songs. It's like Ricky Ricardo. Remember Ricky Ricardo? Right? Remember Ricky Ricardo? Right? Sounded cute when he was singing Babalu Aye. And Babalu Aye was a demonic demon that he was, he was, he was crowned in the Santeria religion in Cuba, and he's singing a song, and you invite the devil into your house. Mm -hmm. That's why he was singing that song, so you can chant, and you can be, you could be so indoctrinated to watch I Love Lucy. You thought it was a funny I Love Lucy. She was a witch, too. I gay, I gay, mouth gay, protect it, protect your house. What seems harmless and it takes you away from God is your enemy. I don't care. If, I don't listen. I don't care if it's your dog pooch. <laughs> Pray for me. Anything that seems harmless. I love my mom. I love my wife. I love my daughter. But if they're going to take me away from God, then they're my enemy. Love them, pray for them, stand with them. You mess with my daughter, I'll, 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 I'll put a cap on you. And then I repent later. You'll be having breakfast with Jesus. Then I repent later. But I don't want nothing to take me away from the one that saved me and gave it all for me. No. I'm not going to compromise. I I'm still going to vote for Trump in 2024. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to give it, and do I vote for him because I, he loved Jesus? He's not a polished Christian, and so are you not. You're not a polished Christian either. And then people say, I don't like the way he talks, but I don't like the way you talk. <laughs> my, chap, my, my gas was cheaper, yeah. and my eggs were the right price. Because <laughs> I, love, I love breakfast. <laughs> and, and man, <laughs> I love breakfast. And I'm, uh, listen, I've learned, the Lord has taught me.
to find common ground to minister with people. But I'm not part of a clique. I refuse to be part of the clique. No, my clique is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's my clique. I minister, and, 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 and I'm not part of uh, subscribing like I'm not part of that clique either. You know that I was telling pastor, right? When people say, the Lord said, don't you ever, ever say, subscribe and like on YouTube. I said, Lord, why? He said, that's the spirit of witchcraft. He said, you want witchcraft in your life? I said, of course not, Lord. He said, when you manipulate people to subscribe and like your stuff, when I'm the one that's supposed to put it in their hearts to follow you, not you, put it in their hearts to follow you. He said, you, you are operating on a spirit of witchcraft. He said, you're not operating under the Holy Spirit. Your job is to release the message, teaching, preaching on YouTube. That's your job. If I want people to follow, I know how to touch their hearts and let them follow you. We don't have, in this church, we don't have gimmicks to keep you here, to invite you here. We have the Holy Spirit that will do his job. Listen, you know what's the proof? You want to see the proof? You want to see the proof? Look at all these young people. They could be hanging out. They could be smoking weed. They could be sleeping around. Look at them. Why are they here? Holy Spirit incarcerated them. They're doing life with no parole. They are on all of them on death row. That's the proof. When you go to a church and you see young people, you go, man, God got to be there because them young people are crazy. But they're here because they're in love with Jesus. And they know that this is a good restaurant. We don't do fast food. There's no drive-thru no drive here. You're not going to get chicken and nuggets in this house. I know, let me finish with this. I know some of you are getting hungry. <laughs> I'm into chicken and nuggets. They're like, yo, I, ta I take a 10-piece. Barbecue sauce. Uh, I know. I know y'all like, woof. <laughs> the last thing I say, flirting with the devil seems harmless, but it brings spiritual death. Don't flirt with the devil. Don't flirt with the world. Don't flirt with darkness. Jesus is a jealous God. Jesus is jealous. Don't flirt. Because what seems harmless when you flirt, it seems what the Bible said, what seems right to a man in the end, it brings destruction. And there's no purgatory. You're not going to have a pina colada. No one's going to pray you into heaven. Your witness don't work. You can go to Home Depot, knock on all the doors you want. You ain't going nowhere. It is Christ and Christ alone. Christ is so gangster that he said, he said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No other religion, I end with this, no other religion, no other religion can say that. 